Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to the tactical review video. I did receive two comments uh, from two subscribers or viewers. I hope in the future that we'll be having more people joining because i feel like you guys do have some very valid opinions but before we do get into the video please do subscribe to the channel as that will be helping us to get this family to grow even bigger and thank you for all of you guys who have been supporting the channel i have to say as barca fans we have really been divided on how barcelona's shape in possession should be as understandably so you guys are very concerned about conceding goals as we have different opinions but let's see the first comment reggie hood says that I feel like Rafinha as a right interior should become a thing. He can't beat his man on the touchline, but his creativity from deep, suiting and tendencies to run in behind from those half spaces seems like a powerful weapon. He has the work rate to help out defensively too. I just don't know about his ability to receive the ball under pressure or with his back to goal. So that is what Reggie Wood says. I totally agree with Reggie here, you know, Rafinha has really been affecting the game from this half space. However, he has been cutting inside while doing it. Do you want him to already be in the half space? Because that means that Joao Cancelo would have to go forward. And we've known that Javi is picking Lamine, so he has other plans for Joao Cancelo, right? So the 2-3-5 situation can still happen with this, with Rafa in between the lines, of course, in the half space. Uh, you know, as the ball progresses, it's easy for him then to receive the ball, you know, especially if he's left-footed. Uh, he can easily play the likes of Cancelo in behind, you know. Um, but I, I, I don't think Xavi has this way he wants Cancelo to be down there. Because like I just said, he rather wants to have Lamin Yamal in this position with uh, Rafinha, you know. And we've known that Joao Felix really has benefited from this, you know, uh, just at the back post. But like I said, he has doing, he's been doing this by cutting inside. Let's look at some of the positions he already has been taken up, you know, look how deep he is. And I think he's too deep. He should be right over here, you know, if we want to stretch the opposition. And uh, yeah, so he's really been going too deep, in my opinion, almost like a number 10. So it's not an interior, you know, so it's more like a number 10 where he should really be close to the half space. Mickey Token says, like I've said countless times before, a back three of pure centre-backs will immediately fix the conceding problem. I don't understand why Xavi would change his most effective part of the pitch of last season that comfortably won us La Liga. I agree with you, it really did win us La Liga, but you have to remember now we have Joao Cancelo. What are we going to leave out? Are we going to leave Joao Cancelo or are we going to leave Balde? So it's not as easy as it sounds, you know. Miki Token goes on to say, now that Frankie and Pedri are absent, the midfield has no control and there's no one in the first team squad that can take over that role. Gunduan only cares about attacking and Fermin Lopez is not a controller. Enter Marc Casado. And yeah, if you go off of the Mallorca game, I think there was no control. But don't forget, that was four games in 11 days. So the guys were really tired. There was no concentration at all. So you can't base your opinion off of that. But like I've said guys, we shouldn't be hasty because the ball control in this game wasn't on. So it's not about the shape or anything, you know. But I do feel like we are sometimes way too deep in the opposition's half, right? Everybody is just there. And I feel like Kunde and Araujo should be a little bit more deeper. And guys, we should accept the fact that we are an attacking side. We push up so high against the opposition in their own half that we leave acres of space for them to attack. We just need to learn how to control it better. And in this game against Mallorca, it was just sloppy passes that enable these guys. If you look at a team like City, for example, they do the same thing that we do. You're going to see later on. But they control games way better than we do. He goes on to say that starting every game with a high line and possession makes Barca predictable and too easy to play against. Barca needs to be diverse tactically and I want Xavi to surprise the opposition more. For an example, Xavi could have used the exact same lineup against Mallorca to form a 4-4-2 and sit deep in the first half. Such formation could have put Ferran, Rafinha, Felix and Balde to good use on the counter. If I'm Xavi, I'd experiment with three different formations to be diverse and unpredictable. So let's look at the 4-4-2 because Xavi has been using the other formations. However, on paper we are already a man down and I don't think Xavi will be using this, right? Only if we use Ferran like a number 10, you know, Ferran has been really good by just dropping in between the lines and just patrolling in the half spaces and receiving the ball, right? However, a change in shape or formation doesn't necessarily mean that's going to change how we play. It just changes the personnel, right? But we still do overload the one side, you know, and then uh, if the opposition wants to go out and press Rafa, one of Cancelo and Gavi could easily just run into the half space to keep them narrow. So changing the formation doesn't really help. You know, we are playing a 4-3-3, but we rarely ever are in a 4-3-3, right? 
But a change in formation doesn't necessarily change the way you play uh, or your know, shape. You can even have a 2-3-5 with a 4-4-2, you know. So, uh, yeah, it's maybe just a personnel change or swapping position. But look at Manchester City. They are doing the exact same thing that Barcelona are doing at the moment. Rico Lewis and uh, Nathan Ake are actually always inverting. You have your 2 3 eights. Then you have Julian Alvarez as a false nine, actually. So exactly the same shape, different personnel. Look at look at how these guys are also playing a 2-3-5. But the difference between Man City and Barcelona is that City are more disciplined and direct than Barcelona, right? You even see how Pep is trying to move the opposition and not necessarily move the ball. Uh, and this is all just to create space, you know. So it depends on what you want as a manager, right? And uh, so, yeah, do let me know what do you guys think. Uh, like I said in the previous tactical analysis, I do want to hear you guys' opinions and have discussions uh, because this is everybody's channel, right? Uh, and also, like I said, when we do tactical analysis, please comment a tactical review underneath that video so that you can also have your opinion appear in a video like this. Do subscribe to the channel if you're new around here and uh, join the family. We upload at least three times a week. Uh, we do tactical analysis on every Barcelona game and now we have the tactical review video that will drop right after every tactical analysis. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.